I just decided to um, make a very short video on uh, using the power method, and especially the Rayleigh power method of finding the dominant eigenvalue. So if you've got a matrix, there's a built-in eigenvalue function that gives you the eigenvector. We can just run that. So it gives you the, the eigenvalues. There's the dominant eigenvalue 4 and its corresponding eigenvector. And the property is such that if you take the matrix times the eigenvector, it should give you the same answer as using the constant or the eigenvalue times the eigenvector. And we can simply test that by saying A times P, which is the eigenvector, when we we'll use the first column. And we'll use the corresponding eigenvalue, which is 1, times that vector. So let's say L1 times P, the first column. And that should give us exactly the, the same answer. So that's a quick way to test that. Now to use the power method is actually very, very straightforward. We're just going to say N equals the size of A, and then N equals any one of the two values. So let's say N to the amount of columns. And then we're going to start off with a arbitrary uh, answer or eigenvector of X old equals, and the, we're not going to use zeros as for the Gauss-Sardell method. We're going to use ones. So we can just say um ones n comma one and i'm using n so that you can use any size matrix let's just see if that works so there we go i'm just going to take away this this test for now and then i'll use a vector just to make sure or to actually follow the values as it converges to our eigenvector and eigenvalue. So let's say xvec equals x old. Okay. Now to, to actually find the dominant eigenvalue is fairly straightforward. We're just going to create a for loop equals 1 to say 10. Let's make it 8. And then we're going to say x new equals a times x old. So this will give us a sort of a new estimate for the eigenvector and then we'll say our lambda value let's say k equals x new the first value and then we're going to divide our vector with a with a, the current estimate of our eigenvector. So we're just going to say x new equals x new divided by lambda, the current lambda. And I'm going to use this, I'm going to start from 2 so that we can keep our first values here. And then we're going to add it to our vector. Just to follow the changes, x vec double point k, the new column equals x new. And then we simply say x old equals x new for the next iteration. And then we'll look at our lambda values and we'll look at the vector. Okay, so you can see how this is converging. Um, let me just clear all of this. Just don't want to show all these in between data. Okay, so we've got our dominant eigenvalue of 4. And as you can see, it is actually converging to that value. So let's make this 10, see if we're getting closer. Getting closer, and if we make this, say, 20, we are getting to our dominant eigenvalue. And this is the corresponding eigenvector. Okay, so as you can see for the dominant eigenvalue, if you divide 
this whole vector with 0.5774 you'll get just simply the ones and minus one so just to test again let's say lambda uh, a times lambda k and lambda k times the corresponding vector the last column and if all is well this should give us the same answer Oh, it shouldn't be the eigenvalue, it should be the vector. Sorry, x vec, comma k. Sorry, I'm fast asleep. And that gives us the same value, exactly as we expect. So we've got the same here as the, the matrix times the eigenvector. Gives the same answer as the constant times the eigenvector. Okay, so now to use the Rayleigh power method, that's quite easy. So all we need to change is, obviously we don't want to specify the number of iterations. We're going to make a while loop with an error and also a maximum amount of iterations. So sometimes the method doesn't converge and you just need to stop the iterations if consecutive errors do not change and it doesn't converge to a specific value. So to do that, we are going to say while the error is more than the tolerance and the k is less than the k max which we can um, k max which we can specify so the one thing we need to do we're going to start off with the error equals one just to get things going but we'll put the tolerance at say 10 to the minus 5 so we want a very very small error when we stop the loop and we can specify specify k max as say 100 iterations so if it goes more than 100 iterations just stop the while loop so that it doesn't go forever and then we'll just start off k equals let's say k equals one so now we actually got a loop we're going into the while loop because the error is more than the tolerance, but it will change with every iteration. And we've got our k and our k max, which is less than the k max. So what we do here is exactly the same x new equals a times the x old, which we specified is ones. But then we use the Rayleigh quotient to find our estimated current eigenvalue. So let's just say also lamp k equals x new transpose times x old you need to put the transpose because both are column vectors and you can't multiply a 3 by 1 with a 3 by 1 so we're going to change x new to a 1 by 3 and the x old is a 3 by 1 and we divide this by the x old transpose times x old so that's the Rayleigh quotient for the current estimate of the lambda value or the eigenvalue, the dominant eigenvalue. Okay, then we're going to say x new equals x new divided by the lambda k as before. But now we're going to work out an error and we're going to use the relative error. And what we're going to use is the norm. Okay, and inside the norm, we're going to say x new divided by the norm of x new. And we're going to minus x old divided by the norm of x old. And that will give us our error. Okay, so I'm just going to make this, it's just to make it more readable. Um, and then we're just going to say x old equals x new and k equals k plus 1. And then at the end we want to show, show our amount of iterations. 
So K equals K minus 1. That is the amount of iterations with that we actually did. We're going to show the lambda value and we show um, let's just show the, the latest vector, so x nu. Okay. I'll take this away from now. So you can see how it converges to our dominant eigenvalue and this is our corresponding eigenvector and once again to show that you need to just show that the matrix times the eigenvector x nu must be the same as the lambda value the latest lambda also times the vector x nu so that's just a test to see that it converges to the same value so that is the Rayleigh power method of finding the dominant eigenvalue. Now sometimes it works if you want to find the smallest eigenvalue, which in this case is 1. If instead of A, you try to use the inverse of A. And you can see the lambda value now converges to the smallest eigenvalue. Value. And you still have your, your matrix times your vector, your eigenvector, is the same as the constant of a lambda value, which is 1 times the eigenvector. And it is as easy as that.